Just this week, uh, Jacob was gunned down poli by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, after breaking up a fight between two women. Uh, he's paralyzed, but thank God he's alive. Rioting broke out overnight, and no arrests have been made. Then there's Breonna Taylor, whose portrait by Amy Sherald graces the cover of Vanity Fair this week. Um, she's a 26-year-old EMT who was shot dead while she slept in her home by Louisville Metro Police. Um, Jonathan Mattingly, Brett Hankinson, and Miles Cosgrove. Her murderers still have not been arrested. Celebrities have spoken out about it. Oprah even put billboards up all over the city. Um, the attorney general has not filed charges, but has the audacity to arrest peaceful protesters who show up at his house and allegedly had a whole engagement party while continuing to not charge officers in Brianna's case. Brandon and Sean, why haven't her murderers been arrested, bro? And why, and why won't more good cops shine the light on the bad cops? Whoever wants to jump in first, man. There are a lot of answers to that. I mean, my first thought is racism. I think Kentucky is a pretty racist state. I mean, it's where Mitch McConnell hails from. But then you really, you talk about elections and you can start dipping into the idea of like down ballot and who is voted. I believe their attorney general is somebody that's an elected official there. And then you also talk about police unions and the power that they have over the police or the attorney general and actually prosecuting these guys. I mean, so all that is a factor in why her police officers or her killers have not been arrested. Well, you know, there's a, you know, I just got back from Louisville and I got a chance to spend a good deal of time with, uh, with Brianna's mother, Tamika, her, her sister. I got to spend several hours with Kenny, who was her boyfriend, who was there uh, in the apartment when she was murdered. It goes back to something that Van said when we first started this conversation, that Democrats and Republicans have to bear the responsibility for mass incarceration and police brutality. The only statewide official in Kentucky that's a Republican is the attorney general. But before the case was put to Kentucky's attorney general, Daniel Cameron, a black man, a black Republican who spoke last night at the Republican National Convention and had the audacity to mention Brianna's name, which stung a lot of people yesterday. But before the case was given to Daniel Cameron, uh, Louisville has a district attorney who's a Democrat who refused to prosecute the officers and was so determined to prosecute Brianna's boyfriend uh, that he had him arrested and then recused himself from Brianna's case because he said, I can't prosecute her boyfriend and prosecute the officers at the same time. So I recuse myself. Kentucky has a Democratic governor. Louisville has a Democratic mayor. Like there are a lot of Democrats in power that created the system. The, the police chief in Louisville was appointed by a Democrat. And so it's one of those things that it's not as simple as pointing to Trump, to pointing even to the Republican Daniel Cameron because a Democrat had the case and failed. And then it fell to Daniel Cameron who was also failing the family in this case. And then there's, there's another thing that we have to talk about this case is complicated and i mean that not to dismiss not to dismiss it but to say the officers who showed up that day were were given a warrant the warrant was bs they lied to get it and and the postmaster general the person who oversees louisville's postal system said that hey the information you all said uh we gave you we didn't give you so there's something there but the fact is that these officers were given a warrant and because they were and because they acted on a warrant they were given, I have talked to prosecutors all over the country. This case is a hard case to prosecute because it really is about the 10 different ways the whole system failed, Brianna. Uh, it, it's about bad law. It's about how difficult it is to prosecute police officers. So a lot of people just think, man, they haven't prosecuted this case yet because uh, uh, black women don't get justice, you know, all oh, because uh, Kentucky is conservative. Kentucky is conservative and it's hard to get justice. 
but this case is very, very complicated. And I think what you will ultimately see is the best case scenario is that these officers are going to be charged with something significantly less than any of us want, or they may not be charged at all. And uh, the case is, it's not the, it's not an ideal case to prosecute. Can I, can, can I give like, up? yeah, just like a, I'm going to give like a, I'm going to dumb myself, I'm going to give a dumb dude's opinion of this. So <laughs> let's say we reverse that, right? For some reason, uh, there's some sort of misunderstanding, a bad system where three, where three cops, if it were the other way around, if Hankinson and them were inside and some kind of way by mistake, best intentions, however you want to set up the hypothetical, someone walks into some place where they are when they're laying down and slaughters them. Okay. The energy behind it would be different. See what I'm saying? Part of what's like Cameron and the rest of these guys, they haven't even given us the feeling that they care about justice. Mm. Like everything is so being being dealt with so behind the scenes and so in, in such a clandestine way that the people that see an innocent black woman slaughtered in her bed in her home, like the people that see an innocent black woman that, that has lost her life for absolutely nothing, they're being told to eat shit. Right. And, oh, in all of these cases, there right. are legal aspects to it. What we want is the energy that would have been provided to us had there been a law enforcement officer or someone whose life is worth a damn in America. I want to feel like you care about finding the truth. Then I want right. you to go out and find it. Now, yep. if the truth is a pill that's hard to swallow, we'll deal with that then. But mm -hmm. right now, well, Van, I'll and say, and you know, hold, hold on one second. Yeah. We got to take one quick break. We will be right back. Devon, we're gonna come to you and talk about from a spiritual standpoint how we can deal with this. This is heavy. This is heavy. This is Kings with Cosign on Fox O. Welcome back to Kings with Cosign. I just want to thank uh this round table of brothers, fellas. I'm honored. Um, Brandon, brother Devon, Sean, Van, thank you so much uh for pulling up and, and sharing insight on all of the craziness that's going on. Uh Devon, I wanted to just tap in with you because mm -hmm. You know, from a faith standpoint, what can we do as believers of the most high, you know, as far as navigating these times? We know that uh, a lot of evangelicals are Trump supporters as well. But <laughs> to our people, you know, where are you at with it from a faith perspective? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, it's it's in moments like this, I think our faith is tested and questioned and at the same time strengthened. You know, when you look at the progress that we as people, as black people have made in this country, uh, so much of it has to do with our connection to faith. And I do believe that not only faith will help us now, but faith will, will take us where we need to be. I mean, look at this, this conversation. You know, you have, uh, you know, five uh, brothers coming together to talk about the state, the state of the union, not always agreeing, but having a conversation in love. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is about. And I think if we lose faith, we ultimately lose hope. If we lose hope, we can't light the way. What we, what we can't do, and I love what you know, Michelle Obama said, and I also love how she also continued to expound upon it in her speech at the DNC, which is, you know, when they go low, you know, we, we go high. And here's what high looks like. You know, when we go high, we do stay united. We do believe that there's a better day. We fight for that. You know, faith is not something that I, I want people to think of in, in terms of passivity, because it's not. And to your point, Coast, man, yes, there are, you know, a lot of white people in the evangelical community that I take them to task, you know, say, hey, wait a minute, we're talking about the body of Christ. If we the body of the Christ, how, how can you represent Christ and want people to follow your Jesus when the Jesus you stand for is was more empathetic and more caring about the people than you are? Uh -huh. So it's mm. important for us mm. as, as a people to know that God is with us, that uh, faith works. It is a power, a superpower. And I do believe yeah. that through prayer and through fighting the good fight and letting God lead, uh, we can do amazing things. And we're already seeing those amazing. That's good. Things. That's good. That's good, brother. My hope is that Joe Biden and uh, Miss Sister Harris, uh, they take this opportunity as a moment for growth. Uh, more than that, I hope that we as black people hold their feet to the fire and demand the things that we need. 
uh, but we can't do that from our sofas. We have to go to the polls or mail in our ballots. And for more information on how you can get involved, visit our Forever Floatis, Michelle Obama's website. Thank you for bringing her up, Devon. www.whenweallvote.org. Uh, we are responsible for the world that we create and the world that we leave behind for our children. Everybody. We are all in this together, but we've got to be involved in moving the needle forward.